So a while ago, I put up a video on this channel and I think the thumbnail was schools are failing. So I talked about why I wanted to homeschool and why you should want to too, you know, clickbait triggering title, right? So I got a lot of people saying, I'm a wackadoo, go find someone more qualified to teach your kids, you idiot, you know nothing, can't even speak, whatever. And then I got other people saying, yes, that's how I feel and I'm gonna homeschool too because of your video. And it was like super polarizing, very much both extremes. Well, today's video, it has been several months, nearly a year later since I created that one and wow I have learned so much about what it's actually like to homeschool your kids and so hindsight's 2020 today's video I'm gonna talk about the seven things I wish I would have known before homeschooling that would have saved me so much headache with my six-year-old before we get into it if you guys are new to my channel subscribe down below if you are new like this video if you get value from it and yeah let's go ahead and get into so it so if you guys are a 90s kid or an even an 80s kid you know early 2000s kid you might have this perception especially if you went to regular school School, and I did my entire life that in order to homeschool your kids, you have to be at home all the time. You can't have a social life. You have to be very smart. You have to be equipped. You have to be qualified. You have to sit at the dining room table for a couple hours every single day, teach your kids. They have to be super obedient naturally out the womb because if they don't listen to you, they'll turn out dumb. Anyways, you have all of these negative perceptions of what homeschooling looks like. And so you think, well, I'm not equipped, right? I am really not that smart. I can't speak that well. I say literally too much. This is all me, okay? So I thought all of those things as well till I started going to homeschool groups really before my kids were of homeschool age. So I started really going to co-ops or like park play dates throughout Southern California for like a good six months, just meeting people. Like uh, sometimes I would even shadow the moms. I would ask, obviously I'd have to know them, but can I like see you guys homeschool? And I'd go to their house, I'd see how they homeschooled. They would show me their curriculums, multiple of them. They would talk to me about how they homeschool. And what was crazy is it's nothing like how I thought and probably honestly how it was back in the 90s or early 2000s. Nowadays, one out of every 12 students are being homeschooled now. And the percentage of children being homeschooled has tripled since mid 2019. Obviously, because people don't want to mass their kids, so they're pulling them out of school, even if they weren't qualified. There are certain people that are not going to mass their kids, and I'm one of them. That's not why I homeschool. But obviously, as you can see, supply and demand, right? So the more that there are homeschool kids, the more opportunities are just gonna pop up for them. Meeting all of these different families, shadowing them or talking with them, I ask, so what time do you start homeschooling? How many subjects do you get through? What time do you end? Do you put them in any drop-off programs? Like, how do you socialize them? I really just interviewed so many different homeschool moms, uh, the ones that unschooled their kids, the ones that did Charlotte Mason, the ones that did like the traditional homeschool where they sit you down and they make you do every single thing. Even if you're crying, you have to do it. And so what I've come to terms with now is that you can homeschool the way that you want according to your own situation. So you don't have to be a full-time stay-at-home mom. There are, depending on where you live, ample amounts of, in most places, drop-off programs for your kids. So I'm not gonna be using any of these because my kids are so small, maybe when they're a little older. Um, but for instance, there's one sort of nearby us, Terra Arts, if you live in SoCal, or there's Heart, I think, Academy, if you work. Cause I know a lot of people like, I literally can't, I work. If you can somehow get some flexibility either between you, uh, yourself and your husband, or with your own job, you can make it happen. And so I know a lot of my mom friends now, they work part-time, they work full-time, they help support the family and their kids are still homeschooled because there are drop-off programs. There are endless amount of opportunities for people depending on what you need, okay? So I got a DM and this person was like, how could you homeschool? You're unqualified to teach math. You know, I took math from this professor and they went to this many years of school, whatever. I'm like, listen, I will teach math to a kindergartner because I'm not worried about that. But if there's any part in me that feels like, I'm unqualified and I think that they could learn from someone else, I will just hire that out. You know, you don't have to do everything yourself and that's the stigma of the homeschool ragged mom that never has time for herself. Just put your kids in school because you aren't smart enough, you don't have enough time and your kids are just gonna be around all the time. It's gonna be so annoying, they're gonna be antisocial, whatever. But that's just not the case. Like, it's just a limited mindset to that person that sent me the DM. If there is ever a time where I need help with teaching a certain type of math, I will either hire a tutor. I will put her in a class. It's not that homeschooled parents are, most of them are anti-class, unless you're like an unschooler. Um, 
you can still put them in drop off programs. Like there's so many things. So for instance, for our family, what we're doing right now, we're in a Charlotte Mason, I guess it's like a co-op. We don't pay anything, um, but a co-op is when there's parent participation. It's not like you just drop your kid off. So Wednesdays, there's something called Wednesday Riches where we do like basically liberal art stuff. So they'll do like a hymn, they'll do a composer study. So we do all that and then we just play and all the moms talk. So that's Wednesdays for like three hours. And then Fridays, it's like all day. And it's, I call it field trip Fridays. They go everywhere so like last week my husband took them because i'm pregnant and like fatigued so he took them to a volcano hike that was like across a creek and he had to carry all the kids in water whatever i'm not down for that right now last week i took them to the natural history museum with the co-op then there's camping then there's snow activities like snowboarding and just depends on like what type of co-op that you join fishing i mean there's something new every friday it is such an enriching life i wish I had my kid's life, seriously, not really, but you know. So yeah, there's co-ops and that's what we're a part of just um, one and they do it twice a week, which is like enough because we have other activities and church. There's also paid programs. Um, there's hybrid homeschools uh, where you can put your kid in school Tuesdays and Thursdays all day, you know, eight to 3.30, and then you just fill in the gaps and you homeschool them on the other days. Or you can obviously hire private tutors. You can enroll them in certain subjects like just math, just cooking from different organizations and there is just a myriad of opportunities for you nowadays when it comes to homeschooling. You don't have to do everything by yourself. People say, I don't have enough money. It depends on where you live, but in California you get, which we don't get it right now because I don't have to legally file um, a PSA. You have to file either as a school or you can file through a charter where the state gives you funds. And so I probably will just do it myself because I don't like people telling me what to do if they turn in paperwork, whatever. But yeah, so basically in California, you get 2,200 to 3,200, I think a year per kid. It's definitely per kid, uh, depending on the charter school and the grade. And from what I can see, whenever my mom, homeschool friends are talking, they can barely spend all the money. They have ample like amounts of money. I don't know if it's because of like how much our state government gives us. I'm, it might be different in different states. I'm sure it is. I actually hear that it's harder to homeschool in Florida, which is the state of freedom. So I don't get it. Um, and easier to homeschool in California. So I don't know what, what gives, but that's just the case that everyone tells me. So I think it depends on your state. They say that the, the state government here is throwing them money. A lot of people have very strong opinions. I haven't formed mine yet. Take and choose what you want your life to look like as a homeschool mom. It doesn't have to be so rigorous and so stressful. You can get so much help. You can have a big community around you of people that are cheering you on and loving you just like as if your kid was in school. So the second thing, as far as like what I would wish I would have known is about socialization. So I did a whole podcast on this on my other YouTube channel, the Modern Housewife podcast, and I really get into it, but I'm just gonna lightly touch on it here. And so my perspective now af after meeting all of these kids, your kids are gonna be more thoroughly socialized as a homeschooled kid in the right fashion if you give them ample opportunities, obviously to socialize. If you lock them in their room and keep them in your house, then no. Um, but if you're trying your best to socialize them and you are a social person, I think that's important. Um, then it's gonna be a non-issue versus being a child amongst a lot of other kids their own age only than being intimidated by authority, aka teachers, principals, and all those types of people. So when you are a homeschool kid, and I see kids in our co-op, they're like 10, 12, 13, 14, you know, they're a little older, um, they are very, confident kids and it, it's obviously because their upbringing and their parents is not necessarily because they're homeschooled i don't think but they talk to all adults they ask everyone questions and yeah they're not afraid basically of adults they could talk to little kids they can talk to bigger kids and we all intermingle together it's not like you're segmented based off of your age and you don't know how to talk to a little kid because it's they're weird and they're smaller and whatever, or you don't know how to talk to an elderly person because you never talk to them basically there's pe classes there's co-ops sports but like for instance one of my neighbors um they homeschool their kids and the kid wants to do ba uh, baseball pro and so doug was telling me that the only way you can get scouted for baseball when you are a homeschool kid is if you enroll yourself in early um early college like a junior college which is what they're going to do so there's ways around it so you just got to be definitely proactive and creative third one i wrote down because i want to say this right i used to try and school all of my kids at the same time even like the two-year-old it was bananas, like no, or he was one at the time. Um, but what I learned is schooling can be done one-to-one. -one. So me and one kid for two concentrated hours, 
really at like a younger age. If they're older, they get more hours, obviously. And your kids are actually gonna far outpace any schooled kid because it's like a tutor relationship. So that's what I have chosen to do, at least for the time being, because I can. If I had six kids, let's say, I don't know if I will, but let's say I have six kids and they're all in different grades, um, I'm gonna have to be more creative and I'm going to have to you know, lump subjects together. But for instance, I have a six-year-old, a four-year-old and a two-year-old and I have, I'm pregnant with another one. So we'll, this is gonna change. But for right now, really only my six-year-old needs to be, I mean, she doesn't even need to be schooled. I could wait until seven and I could cram in everything that she's behind in, which I don't believe, um, but I don't really need to. And she wants to learn. And so what we do now is we'll take an hour or two probably four days a week because it's just one-to-one -one tutor style. So she learns super efficiently. She doesn't have to wait for some kid who's getting, you know, scolded in class. She doesn't have to wait to transition from lesson to lesson. She doesn't have to wait for recess or whatever. She can learn everything in a condensed time period. So we taught her how to read in a very short time period because she wanted to, she was A, motivated, but also B, it's because it's just me and her. So I can clearly see, okay, she doesn't understand EE -E is an E sound. So let's work on that over and over and over and over. And so, yeah, I don't necessarily need to beat a dead horse with her because she wants to learn. She, luckily, I'm thankful in that way. She can learn everything in like a week, you know, whereas in school, since you have to wait and there's so much transition period and there's so many kids you know, to one teacher, it takes like months to learn like something or one month, whereas it could take her like a couple days. So I just like the efficiency. Um, that's another reason we homeschool. So the fourth thing that I wish I knew is your preschooler is not going to be behind if they don't learn their letters. This sort of relates to the third one, but their letters, their sounds, their shapes, um, because it's ridiculous. Okay. So this is where I get really opinionated on obviously everything, but now that I understand like what's happening in school, I just think it's sometimes bogus. So like for instance, preschool, a lot of parents will say preschool is necessary because I want my kid to be smart. It's like, okay, they spend a month learning about A, okay? They'll take maybe not a month. I don't know, I'm not a teacher. You teachers can like get me in the comments, but they'll take way too long to learn what the sound and how to draw and what the letter A is. And it almost mimics daycare in my opinion and with just something to do because for instance, I taught my eldest this way. I was like, okay, we're gonna do A, ah, ah, A. And so we would do A with rocks and nothing's wrong with this fun stuff. I'm just saying sometimes it just drags on too long and you get stressed because you're like, they're not learning fast enough. I need to do more crafts, more activities with the letter A. So you'll take like a week on A, a week on B, a week on C, you know, a week on, I don't know, different types of things. Whereas if you, if you had to, I'm not saying you should do it this way, but if you had to, you could just drill them at an older age and they would know all the sounds in just a couple days of all the letters of the alphabet and how to write them. So basically with the things that are a little bit more monotonous, you know, like learning your sounds, learning how to write things, I want it to be as efficient as possible so that we can live our life. I don't wanna have to spend a hundred hours inside learning about the alphabet, you know, like I just wanna get it done. And so everybody believes in, you know, different types of teaching philosophies, doing Ambleside curriculum, um, but I'm taking a pause until my eldest is six and a half because I can see how fast she can learn. And right now I'd rather just live life with her at such a young age. And I know she's not gonna be behind because we can get it all done when she feels motivated. And so we still school her, but it's not like an intense, like the Ambleside curriculum is. We're gonna start that in August. So my point to the whole preschooler thing about taking like a month on the letter A is that you have to ask yourself, like what am I giving up by making my preschooler sit here and draw the letter A? Like a three-year-old, a four-year-old, like what am I giving up? And a lot of times you have to do it. I totally understand because you have older kids and you're like, well, they just wanna be involved. Like I will be doing that. You know, I will be having my third, Oliver, who's two, when he's three, he's gonna have to sit around the table and do some A's, you know? But I'm not gonna force him to do it. There's like a difference, you know? It's just gonna be school for fun, really. And hopefully he'll learn something along the way, but if he doesn't, it's okay, because I can get it done when he's six or seven. So I asked myself, like, what am I giving up by forcing my eldest, who was four at the time and then five, to learn A, 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 B, 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 and every single day for like an hour, like, I'm giving up so many things. I could be showing her how to garden or taking away her playtime. The most important thing a preschooler age kid can do is play. I've read a ton of books on it. I think that's like common knowledge now, yet we're putting our kids in preschool. Sometimes you have to, I totally get it, but yet we're, we think we have to put our kid in preschool 
school to be smart. Like you do not. They should be playing if you can. I know it's a privilege to watch your kids. Like I totally get it, don't come for me. Um, but if you can, play with your kids. Increase their imagination, read them stories, read them books. Forcing them to do all of this monotonous work can be done at a later age and you have to ask yourself like, what am I giving up? So the fifth thing that I wish I knew is that homeschooled moms do get breaks, but you need to be super structured. I am not naturally a structured person. I am like, oh, like a fly by the seat of my pants. Every day should be different. I get bored. Like, no, I'm not structured at all. I don't have incredible amounts of discipline like all these other homeschooled moms. I'm trying to get there though. And I know that the more disciplined of a person I am, the more structured I am as a person, the more mental sanity I am going to get as a homeschooled mom. So for instance, I could have just let everybody wake up at nine and a lot of homeschool moms are totally fine by doing this. It's just, it wasn't fine by me because I didn't get a break, right? I could let everyone wake up late, go to bed super late. It works for some people. Um, I could let them run around during like the quiet time of day and bother me with things. And I was doing that, maybe not waking up at nine, but I was not enforcing a quiet time, not enforcing a super strict bedtime. And because of that, I was kind of losing it. And so now to let myself have a break, because it's necessary, right? I make sure that they have like an hour and a half at minimum, like an hour and a half to two hours being alone in separate rooms. And I make them like little toy play packs that only come out on certain days of the week to incentivize it. They get their Play-Doh out and they have to be separated so they don't fight. Really, it's my four and six year old girls while the baby naps. So then I can learn about homeschool. I can paint my nails, not that I do. Um, I can take a shower, like I don't know if I didn't get to it, that's gross. But I can do something that I want to do. Like today I organized my pantry without a kid trying to climb me like a tree, like I always say. And so I can do that because I'm more structured and I do get breaks. Breaks, although cleaning your pantry is not a break. Sometimes I'll read a book. So the sixth one is that there is no excuse to be lost when it comes to homeschooling, when there are so many willing groups of people that are you know, excited to help you navigate it. Even if you live in a rural place, there are so many forums and different things that will help you through homeschooling. I mean, we even had one of our core students, you guys should check her out, Lee, Little by Little Homeschool on Instagram. She's amazing. She like mentors new homeschool um, families and moms. And so there's just no excuse, you know, if you, feel like I'm so overwhelmed, I'll just put them in school. That's obviously a choice you do you, but it's gotta be something that you like deeply value because you do have to go and seek out these forums and these in-person communities. So the last one I'm gonna end on is something more specific to my life. So if, I know a lot of you guys probably work from home. I really felt like living, schooling, and working from home was pure chaos and sanity. And everywhere I turned, it was a mess. There was toys everywhere. I was always behind on laundry. And that's really because I was a working mom. Um, um, like a career woman mom, which I'll talk more about on my channel if I haven't already. And so I stopped doing that to really be like a housewife and someone that is the full uh, focus is my kids and homeschooling them because it's easier mentally for everybody. And so what I did to help my life is every single toy was taken out of the house because the toys would just get dumped and we have way too much stuff and like most Americans, way too many toys. And so instead I would just create a little bin that the kids can manage themselves in I think just two rooms of the house. It makes me sound like such a mean mom, but my six year old thanks me for doing it. That's how messy our house was because of toys. And so now if it gets dumped, they can put it all back in themselves and it's not overwhelming. And so I did that, but with the rest of the toys or maybe like 50% of them, cause the rest I donated, um, I made play packs. So little packs that say girls toys. And so I take them out whenever they're dying for toys. Really it's only one to two times a day. They're looking for extra toys if that, cause they're really outside. Um, and so I'll take out like trains and I'll take out like Hot Wheels for the boy, you know, if people are getting antsy and they need to switch it up or Play-Doh. And so I just keep them out of sight, out of mind. So they're not getting dumped everywhere. And so I'm not cleaning all the time because I would find myself cleaning and I should have been like schooling them, you know? And so you have to be more structured. So that's pretty much it for the seven things that I wish I knew as a still new homeschool mom. If you guys have anything else I should know, let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.